So the face and body are looking great, but there's one obvious thing we haven't made yet. The antlers. I actually started these earlier in the project, but I grouped things together for a more cohesive video, so please excuse the lack of continuity. Using the head for size reference, I sketch out the shape of one antler. Cut strips equal in length for each segment of the antler, in other words, every time it bends. Roll the strips into cylinders and glue the ends. Connecting the pieces was kind of awkward, but basically I glued small strips of paper across each intersection, all while comparing it to the draft below. And of course, we'll need eight of these. The basic shapes are formed, so to strengthen the structure, I'll be using good old paper mache. I wanted the antlers to be both lightweight and hollow, so this was the best solution I could think of. Taking particular care around the joints, wet the newspaper with a glue, water, or flour mixture, and drape each piece around the antler. They sure are higgledy-piggledy shapes, aren't they? The most interesting and beautiful part of this Pokemon are the gems on its antlers. So let's make them next! As if this project wasn't ambitious enough, I'm going to try my hand at mold making and casting resin for the first time. First things first, I use more epoxy to create the shape of the gems. There are three different gem pieces per antler in a rainbow of colors. Because these epoxy pieces will be duplicated, I take a lot of care and time sanding and perfecting the shape before the next step, creating the mold. This is Silly Gum from PBO, Pebo, and it works a lot like epoxy. Take equal parts A and B. Whoa, it feels slippery. Mix until the color is solid, then press it onto the piece you wish to duplicate. It cures really fast within 10 minutes or so, so work quickly. I hope this works. Feels just like thick rubber. It did great! That's beautiful. Next, I'll be using this Japanese brand of UV resin for the first time. You resin pros out there are likely already predicting catastrophic failure, but it was my first time and researching this stuff was hard, so bear with me. I bought one big clear bottle of resin and several colors. I also felt it was time to invest in a UV lamp, both for this and future projects. So, uh, my molds can't face up. There we go. Let's give this a shot. Figured I'd start with the lightest colors first, just in case the mold stains and transfer color or something. Resin feels kind of like syrup. Pop it into the lamp and hope for the best. It says it takes about eight minutes under the UV light to harden. I feel like we shouldn't stare into this. Let's see how they did. Uh, oh dear, they did not fully cure, no matter how long I kept them under the lamp. And here's why. When using UV resin, the mold must be clear so that the light can penetrate every part of the mold and reach the resin. Solid molds like this one I used must be paired with a different kind of resin, two-part resin, which you mix together, pour, and it just cures on its own. Long story short, I used the wrong materials in combination. What to do? I'm stubborn, so I figured I'd force it to work and cure thin layers at a time. If it's thin enough, the UV light from directly above should be sufficient, right? I'll just take it real slow, adding a couple drops of resin, then a little color for each layer. And it kind of worked. They're a little strange. I mean, there's more bubbles and the surface is uneven. Sometimes glossy, sometimes matte. Definitely better than take one, but basically I forced it and it shows. Plus it took ages, as you can imagine. I worked through the night only to produce six more pieces, or two antlers worth. It was then I decided purchasing the correct molding supplies would probably be worth my time and money. <laughs> While we're waiting for supplies to come in the mail, let's make her eyes. Take a white polymer clay like this one and knead it till it's nice and mushy. My block was about three years old, so it took some convincing. Ah, my fingers! <laughs> Thank you. 
I pressed the ball into my hemisphere mold and cut away the excess. You could form this by hand as well, of course, if you don't have one of these. Using the positive side of the mold, I press in the indented part. Once you're happy with the shape, pop them in the oven and cook as long as the package tells you. Despite my best efforts, there are always dust bits and fingerprints all over these things. I don't know how polymer clay artists can keep the stuff so clean. But that's okay, a little sanding takes care of the biggest problems. Now we can have fun filling in the color with glitters and sparkles. I paint glue on the sides to coat the whole basin with a dark blue glitter first, then sprinkle in other bits. I'm using Lisa Pavelka's Magic Gloss this time. It's a shallow pool of UV resin, so it should work fine with the lamp. Most importantly, I pop on the X-shaped pupils specific to the Pokémon, which were cut out of black paper. Add two more blobs to make the dome shape and cure them again. And they're done! Super cute and shiny! Yay! They look pretty adorbs, but if you look at her from any direction other than front on, you see a problem. Despite all that sanding we did, the shape of the eye and the shape of the face just aren't lining up. The gap is very noticeable. I knew that would bother me, so I made a new pair of eyes specific to this face's shape by smooshing a piece of clay directly into the back of her face and proceeding with all the same steps from there. They look pretty derpy on their own, and... <laughs> Once we set them in place with silicon putty, they look sharp and gap-free. While we have the UV resin out, let's add some shiny detail to her forehead gems, the chest piece, and those back spots. Her top half is looking unfinished, so bringing out the twirl-tastic yarn by Yarn Bee here, let's stick on the fur accents. I'll be sticking on a piece from the breast to shoulder. This is in the Pokemon's design, and I think it makes a nice sort of top, like semi-clothes. Modest fur, let's call it. Her long, awkward neck could use some fluff, too. Remember the neck peg that came out of the head at the start of the video? No? Well, that's okay, who needs it? Mark the crown of the head where it sits above the neck peg in a resting position. Insert a strong wire into the head on both sides like a staple and through to the inside. I'd suggest more of a stiff 14 gauge wire, not the shrimpy stuff I'm using here. Form a hook shape on the inside. This will hold the elastic in place. Using the bar inside the neck, we can stick our elastic through and loop both ends back onto the hook. The tight pull of the stretched elastic will be good enough to keep the head on nice and sturdy. I end up upgrading to a bigger elastic because the antlers added more weight, but normally an 8th inch elastic should do the trick. Time to get these antlers attached to the head. I use my hand drill to create 8 holes in the head where the antlers will go, add a small extension of armature wire to help hold up the antler, then hot glue them to the head, layering up a small bed of glue around the base for each antler. Sometimes I cut down the base to fit the slant of the head. We want to hide that hairy scalp and attach the antlers better to the base with another round of paper mache. I'm hoping it will start to look like an antler crown and less like a giant tarantula soon. It totally looks like a spider. <laughs> ah. Give it a priming coat of white and then a final beige color. Some blue comes up from the bottom of the head too. Naturally, I attach it to the face a couple times to line things up. Hear that? The other molding supplies have arrived at last! We can finish the resin. Now, I'm not going to include a full mold making tutorial in this video, especially since I'm such a noob at it myself. So if you're really interested to learn about this, I'll link the videos that I found most useful and the ones I watched in the description box below. Basically, I followed a long checklist of things to do. I made casings out of cups and plastic packaging, accurately mixed the silicon and hardening agents using an electronic scale, and dripped the silicon into the molds to eliminate bubbles. 
Although it honestly looks like Bubble City in there, so let's hope it works. It took a couple hours to cure, and when I removed everything, it made a beautiful, clear, rubbery mold. But to answer the big question, will it cure the resin? Fingers crossed. It worked! <laughs> yes! You guys don't even know how happy I was. The resin was giving me so many problems. It was solely my fault we had to push the deadline for our videos back an entire week, so I do apologize to my collaboration partners. They were super nice about it though. Thanks guys. Look at all these beautiful gems! I didn't have enough resin to remake the first few pieces, and they're good enough I guess. In fact, I barely had enough resin to make the last pieces. I had to cut open the resin bottle and spatula out every last drop, because I'll be darned if I had to order more resin supplies. It took a lot of learning to get here, but we did it. Aren't they so pretty? Let's stick them on the antlers. I marked the locations, cut open the antler, and glue each gem in place around the edge. Now, why did I go through all the trouble of making hollow antlers and clear gym pieces? To light them up from the inside. I've never been great with electronics, but I got a fantastic brush up lesson from my awesome dad, thanks so much dad, who figured out how I should make the circuit and what supplies to use. Following the instructions we wrote together, I soldered on the LED lights. This was another first for me, and I got better towards the end. Basically, I created a parallel circuit, which fits into the crown of the head, including a switch at the base. At long last, her gigantic crown of antlers is complete and can be reattached to the body via the elastics I showed earlier. I went back and forth about hair. A couple Photoshop sketches later and... Yeah, definitely hair. This deep blue is TARDIS from the doll planet on Etsy. And the white I used for the top of her head is Snowflake from dollyhair.com. If you have any questions about the materials I used in this video, they will all be listed in the description box below. That forehead seam annoyed me, so taking some simple cardstock paper, I cut a fancy tiara-esque design out and glue it to the forehead. I was careful gluing on the hair and tiara. We still want the back of her head to be removable after all. A little styling will hide the rest of the seam lines, and then we can call this legendary Pokemon complete! Wow, this bamboo forest is massive! Was that a legendary Pokemon? What a journey! From molding and casting resin, dabbling in electronics, and sculpting a functional leg joint, this doll had a lot of firsts for me. Sometimes I think the antlers are too big, but then I look at the Pokemon again and think, well, it's pretty accurate, actually. 
Despite my best efforts, her head still ended up very heavy, so I'll have to make her a special stand if I want to display her properly. For the photos you're seeing now, we had her suspended by her antlers, and I photoshopped the string out in post. By the way, big thank you to my wonderful hubby who puppeteered Xerneas while I took the photos. I'm sad to say the LEDs were insufficient in lighting the entire antler, but they do illuminate the first row. Back when I planned on sculpting a smaller head is when I talked with my dad about making the LED circuit, so my plans changed and, you know, it just didn't work out. Since it is accessible, I might try extending more lights into the antlers later, because it's just a shame the whole thing doesn't light up. However, in the sun, and especially with backlighting, the resin pieces sparkle quite beautifully. Thank you so much for joining me! The Eevee family seems mighty interested in their new fairy-type friend. So legendary! And don't forget, there are two other Pokémon in the Aura Trio, Yveltal and Zygarde. Yveltal looks so dramatic in her elaborate gown, and Zygarde is rocking some heavy body modifications of his own. Working with these two wonderful artists was a blast, so make sure you head over to the Doll Fairy and Doll Motions channels for more Poké goodness! Gotta watch them all! Give that like button a boop, and become a subscriber if you enjoy creating customs with me. I really appreciate it. Stay artsy! Annyeong!